In this example, we want to give the minimal conjunctive form of a Boolean function. So what we are given here is a Boolean function f where we are given the offset of the function. That is the rows in our truth table where we have a zero for the function. So we, what we can do now is that we can fill this out in our kernel map. So we have a zero here in the position for one, a zero here in the position for two, and a zero here in the position for three. In the position for six, which we have here, we have also a zero, and seven, which is here, we have also a zero. And then we have 12, which we find here, and 14, which we find here. And since we do not have a don't care set for this function, the rest of the positions are ones. So we can also fill this out in our Carnot map. And now since we want to have it on the conjunctive form, the easiest way to accomplish this is to circle or to box the zeros in our Carnot map. So let us start with the first one. So for the first zero we can find, this is the largest block. And for the next zero, this is our largest block that we can find. Then for the zero corresponding to our 12 in the truth table, the largest block will be this cyclic block here, which includes the 14. But for the 14, we can also find another prime implicant with two zeros, which is this one here. And now we just name these for simplicities. We call this one A, we call this one B, we call this one C, and then we call this prime implicant D. Note now that what we have made in our boxes here is not implicants or prime implicants, because by definition, the implicants are covering ones and don't care terms in our Carnot map, and now we're covering zeros. So these are actually the dual of our implicants. So let us write this dual of the implicants. So we have A, which is x1 prime, x2 prime, and x4. And since we have zeros in our Carnot table here, we will write this with a prime. And this can, using De Morgan's law, be written as x1 or x2 or x for prime. Then for our next dual of an implicant, we will have B, which is x1 prime x3. And again, since we have a zero in our Carnot map, we have a prime here. So this can be written using again the Morgan's law x1 or x3 prime. Then the next is C, which is x2, x3, x4 prime. We prime this using the Morgan's law. We get x2 prime or x3 prime or x4. And the final one, d, we can write as x1, x2, x4 prime. Then we prime this and we get x1 prime or x2 prime or x4. Now we could use a prime table here in order to find our minimal function, but it is also often easy to see immediately from the Carnot map which is our minimal function. So if we look at the Carnot map, we can see directly that A must be essential because it's the only box covering this zero. B is also essential because it's the only box covering this and this zeros, and D is also essential because it's the only box covering this zero. And using these essential uh, dual of the primes, we will cover all the zeros in our Carnot map. So we can write this as F equals A and B and D. And this will equal x1 or x2 or x4 prime and b, which is x1 or x3 prime. 
and d which is x1 prime or x2 prime or x4 so this expression is our function written on minimal conjunctive form